I think without further ado, I'm going to welcome the Honorable Katrina Conroy up to start our evening off again. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke. I've got a really long speech here. I don't know if I can say it all. I, I want to thank Natalie for getting us started in the right uh, in the right way tonight. And I too want to recognize the Indigenous uh, nations on whose uh, traditional territory we are gathered. And to tell you how important it is for me to be here tonight and how glad I am that it's on tonight because the house isn't sitting because yesterday was a stat holiday. So I could be here tonight because as minister responsible for, as we like to say in Victoria, all things Columbia, this is really near and dear to my heart and I'm really glad that I could be here for one of these uh, these nights when uh, we, the people of the of the basin are able to share how they feel about it and I also I do want to recognize Sylvain and you'll see him shortly on on the screen as uh, our uh, our negotiator from uh, Global Affairs Canada, um, and all the work that he's been doing. But I also want to recognize a couple of uh, guests that are here from our U.S. consulate. Adam Huntman and Jeff Reed are here. They're in the back of the room. You guys want to wave? Um, they're from the U.S. consulate in Vancouver, and it's, it's really nice that, uh, that they made it up here for this. And I, I just think the very fact that, that we're all here talking about uh, the treaty shows how different things are than they were when the treaty was originally signed uh, in the 60s. Um, because in, in that time, there was no discussion with anybody. It was just signed. So it's really important that we have these opportunities to meet. This is our second round of discussions with uh, people from the basin. So it, it's for me, it, it feels it's, it's just so important that we're all here. Um, I do. Like Kathy's going to talk later, but I just want to acknowledge the incredible work she's done as our BC negotiator. She's the head of the BC team. They have, um, they are very much part of the whole process with uh, Sylvan and, and it's an incredible team. And, and also to welcome Nathan, one of the other uh, negotiators from the uh, Indigenous uh, communities that have been uh, added to the table. And it's, um, I think that uh, we can't really move forward um, unless we acknowledge the mistakes that happened over 50 years ago. So for us, it's an opportunity to make sure we're listening because we know, as I said in the 60s, that you know, the government wasn't listening. And it's really important for all of us to know that uh, not only is the are we hearing what you say, but that the people that are at the table negotiating are here and they take your concerns to the table. You know, we, we did lose quite a bit in, in, um, when the original treaty was signed up here. Um, we lost a lot of economic opportunities. We lost, and as reservoirs were flooded, um, I still like to point out to our, our friends from the Okanagan that uh, we had some of the most fertile land in the province that was flooded. Um, and now that la and now the Okanagan takes that uh, that kudos, but uh, I mean we did have incredibly um, prosperous land that was gone. When you think of it, there was nearly 200 square miles of land that was flooded, that was lost, and the social disruption in our region. Like over 2,000 people lost their homes, lost some people lost their communities, and it's you um, know when you think back on that, and it was just taken for granted. The government of the day said this is what's going to happen, and and you have no say in it. Um, indigenous communities lost uh, so much as well, and and sites were destroyed. So today we, you know, we need to look at what's happening today with the, you know, the rising and falling of reservoir levels um, as a result of the treaties. And we need to ensure that we're talking about the, you know, the ecosystems, the, you know, agriculture, the tourism, the forestry, the recreation and, and the culture that uh, continues to be impacted. You know, as a Basin resident, I've lived most of my life here, and, and I'm grateful to see that uh, changes for the better are, are coming around in my lifetime. And as minister, I, I'm incredibly proud of the fact that government is doing things differently. Um, today, we listen, we engage, um, and these community meetings are one example of, of how we're doing that. And it's, it's a process that's continued from the former government started this. I'm, I'm happy to say that, that we're proud to continue to build on the work that was done by the former government. In 2012 and 2013, those discussions were started around the basin of what was going to happen with, with the treaty. And um, last year when the negotiations started, um, we again said that we needed to have these discussions and had a series of 12 negotiations around the basin, or discussions, discussions, not negotiations, 
Kathy would get upset with me if I said people could come to the negotiations, their secret. But um, so we hosted uh, meetings all across the basin last fall, and they were well attended with lots of input. And uh, this year we are again, or they're doing the same thing. We've already held seven, and now there's five more to be held. And I think that it's really important that people have an opportunity to to talk about the negotiations. Although what actually happens at the table is confidential. I think anybody that's been involved in negotiations recognizes that. Um, but it's important to hear what the issues are so that um, those issues can be brought to the table. But we also, if you can't, I'm telling this to the people that are apparently out there in, in social media land or somewhere out there watching apparently. But um, we also have um, quarterly e-newsletters that people can access to keep people informed um, about the negotiations, but also about other things related to the treaty. And we have um, online, you can uh, phone in, you can contact people. So and I'm sure Brooke's going to tell everybody how to do that. Yeah, she's nodding her head. Good. After it's over, you know, there's even a Twitter account. So if we're going to tweet out what's happening with the treaty. Um, we've also got uh, lots of input from local government and Linda Worley. And this is her, her region. Where's Linda? Where are you sitting, Linda? Way at the back. There she is. So Linda's going to speak after about the local government committee. And I know there's some representatives here tonight about the local government committee and They've been a real strong voice for constituents throughout the entire basin representing local government. We also have another committee called the Columbia Basin Regional Advisory Committee, but we just call it CBRAC because ministries love uh, acronyms all the time. So um, that also it's made up of, of experts as well as lay people from across the region and they get together and, and I know that uh, Linda's going to talk a little bit about uh, CBRAC as well and there's some members here tonight because it's really important for us for as a ministry that we are hearing those those voices that we're hearing what's what's happening and and it's a, something that should have been done a half a century ago um, in this process, one of the things that we hear from time, we, we continually have heard from the time that I became uh, minister responsible and when I was the critic responsible for since 2005 when I was first elected, I've always been the critic responsible. We've always heard loud and clear that um, in any modernized version of the treaty that we have to address ecosystems. And we agree with that, and I think that that's it, what's really important is what you'll hear tonight, as Natalie has said. Natalie and, and um, Nathan Matthew will will talk about uh, ecosystems from the Indigenous perspective, and it is so important to hear that uh, for everyone. Um, also, I think that um, it's in, it's important to acknowledge the the role of the Indigenous nations that are at the table because. Uh, they, as well as everyone else, had absolutely no say what happened many, many years ago. And, and I want to thank the, the federal government for agreeing that, uh, that the um, nations, the three nations from our basin should be involved in the uh, negotiations. Um, it was an incredibly important step, and, and I think it uh, demonstrates Canada's and BC's commitment to the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, and something that um, the collaboration, you know, it started in, in 2018, actually, where um, representatives of the three First Nations were at the table um, talking with the, the negotiators about what from their perspective, what the issues were. And, and I think now that they are actually observers at the table, it even strengthens those positions. And, and it strengthens our position um, as a government where we just um, introduced uh, in the legislation um, to implement the, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples here in, in BC. I think it's really important to acknowledge the collaborative spirit and inclusiveness that, that's needed today and uh, throughout the basin. Um, one of the other things last year that we heard that um, we still need to acknowledge and recognize um, what was lost with the with our treaty dams um, and I think in that spirit we are making great headway that um, people from the basin continue to remind us and at the same time know we need to move forward um, the province's Columbia River Treaty Team is, is working on a heritage project, project to acknowledge losses as well as projects that address concerns around agriculture, the Creston Valley Dikes, the fish passages at Duncan Dam, and recreation around the Kim Basket Reservoir. And I believe you'll hear more about these projects later on tonight. So um, in a few days, I'm actually, I'm going to be speaking in, in Seattle at the Pacific Northwest Economic Region's uh, 2019 Economic Leadership Forum. And it's, it's 
really valuable for me to be able to go and, and share BC's perspective on the treaty with American state legislatures. And in the, the case of this upcoming Penware Forum, I'm uh, especially glad to hear that they're having me speak about what the BC government has been, has been doing to engage with people throughout the basin. Um, and I think I take that as a compliment, not only to the government, but to the federal government and to the team we have working on this, but also to all the basin residents who have insisted that your voices be heard, because I think that's critically important. And in the past, Governments will ignore voices if they don't clamor, and, and voices in the basin have said we, we want to be heard, and so they need to be heard, and, and we need that input and that insight, or the process just wouldn't work. So I want to end by thanking everybody for coming tonight. I, I know it's you know, sometimes tough to get out, but I, I think it's really important that you're here, that your voices are heard, and I know there's lots of ways that you can write down your issues too, and Brooke's probably going to tell you all about that too and the fact that it's live streaming and it's on YouTube and people from across the basin can um, can make sure if they can't make it to the meetings that they can be heard and I, I just think that it's it's really important that you're all here and I, and I appreciate the the fact that uh, you, you that this is important enough for everybody that uh, you want to make sure that your voices are heard um, the only thing I want to start doing more of is, is bringing these discussions to classrooms and to uh, high schools and even elementary schools because every time I go and talk, I was at a grade five class recently and ended up, I went to talk to one grade five class and the teacher said, well, the few more classes want to meet with you. I ended up talking to six classes and everyone that I talked to about the treaty the kids immediately lit up and went, oh my goodness, yeah. And I said, this is about your future. And to me, that's what the Columbia River Treaty is about. It's, it's a generational treaty. It's not about what's going to be good for those of us in the room. When I look around the room, it is. But this treaty is going to be good for our kids and grandkids and, and their kids. Because when the treaty was signed in the 60s, I was four. And here I am at uh, okay, I'm 62, um, and it's affecting us. It's affected me all those years, and so it's going to affect those kids for years to come. And so I think this is something that's going to take some time to negotiate. We got to make sure we do it right, and we got to think of those generations to come when we're doing the, those negotiations. So thank you to everybody for coming tonight. Thank you so much.